but y'all can do a little bit better than that. How many of y'all know that God is big? He's so strong and so mighty. If you know this song, sing along with me.
regardless of what you're going through, you're going to come out victorious. Regardless of what your boss told you today, you're going to come out victorious. You might have lost your mind. You might have lost your job. You might have lost your house. But at the end of the day, God has a vital say. You believe that today, just shout out today, at the end of the day, God has a vital say. Yes, God. Yes, God. We're just going to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all can sing this along with me. Worship with us this morning. The song just says, praise him, praise him, praise him.
thank God for another opportunity to share. appreciate one person that said that's all right. <laughs> I want you to turn your attention to the book of Mark, book of Mark, book of Mark. Um, be going from the first chapter of the book of Mark. Here's what it says in the book of Mark in the 35th verse. First chapter, 35th verse. It, it, it reports to us that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, nothing had got up yet, the sun hadn't got up yet, but it was early in the morning. He got up. Somebody say, he got up. I ought to tell you before I get to where I'm going, Jesus had history of getting up in the morning. He got up. He went out and made his way to a desolate, a deserted place. And there he was found praying. Simon Peter and his company Companions searched for him. And when they found Jesus, they said, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus responds, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. For this is why I have come. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, when we look at tonight's text, 
so many rich nuggets that are found in there. But there's one in particular that I want to be able to share with us because I believe that even uh, pre-pandemic and pandemic and post-pandemic, I believe a number of us have found ourselves burnt out. A number of us have found ourselves tired. You found yourself frustrated. You find yourself at times wanting to throw in the towel. You find yourself wanting to give up. You felt overwhelmed. You felt like there was a heavy burden on you. You felt like everybody put the load on your back and wouldn't do their part. You felt like there was a lot on you and it had caused, if not burnout, it caused you to almost have burned out. I want to talk about from this text, even from the life of our dear brother, that, that brown-skinned Palestinian brother. I want to talk tonight, just dealing with for a few minutes, overcoming burnout. Right. And if the household of faith don't mind, share with me tonight by just reporting and saying, overcoming, overcoming. Burnout. burnout. God bless you. I, I, I'll be honest with you tonight, I don't really have a, uh, uh, a major preaching sermon for you tonight. If you're looking to shout, if you didn't shout during praise and worship, you might not get your shout in tonight. I want to really just talk to you and help us because I believe if one of the greatest opportunities for the body of Christ that we look over so much is that we preach so much for the emotions and we don't preach enough for transformation. Amen. We've been guilty. We've been guilty um, for the response and the call. And we've been guilty for wanting to see movement in the sanctuary. But we're very guilty of not preaching enough to see movement in their lives. So the saints have had history of being very movemental and being very uh, uh, motive in, in the sanctuary. But in the world, they are stagnant. Brothers and sisters, if you allow me to talk to you just a minute this morning, I want to make sure that we do more than just lift our hands this morning and that we position ourselves that we can give a hand next tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, all of us, y'all be honest with me. Look at me, and I know, amen, that if you just be honest and wink your eye if you don't want nobody to know that you've almost found yourself burnt out. That that word burnout means the reduction of having substance, uh, substance to having anything left. In other words, burnout means you get to a place where you are depleted. Amen. You get to a place where you just have nothing left. Well, you ever heard that statement? I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I, I wish y'all would help me preach this sermon this morning because. That there's been times, and I know y'all probably looking at it, well, you pastor, you shouldn't talk like this. But no, there's been times I've been sick and tired of being sick and tired of God's church. Amen. I thought y'all would get quiet on me, Amen. y'all. Amen. But I can tell you, even without you saying that you've been sick and tired yourself of God's church because it's shown up in your attendance. It's shown up in your giving. It's shown, y'all won't be happy with me. It's shown up in your worship. But let me go a little further. It's shown up in your lifestyle. Amen. So when we talk about burnout today. This burnout is real. It will deplete you. It will have you so depleted that you don't even want to talk to nobody. Amen. You don't want to deal with nobody. Ever came home from a hard day's work and somebody want to talk and you looking like, I wish you just shut up because I have had a bad day. I'm tired. You want to talk about the news and social media. I don't have time. I have a headache. I'm depleted. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. I wish I had some real people that can just say to yourself, I've had these moments, Pastor, that you're talking about where I felt like I was burnt out. I felt like I couldn't push no more. I felt like this was just the end of it. You want to give up on your relationships, that job that you're on, your career. You want to walk off. I wish I had at least five real working people in here. I'm talking about five real working people in here 
amen, that you were sitting at your job saying to yourself, it got to be something better than this. Y'all won't be real with me this morning because life will push you to a place where you feel like you've burnt out. Brother, so much, let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, amen, it was reported in 2019 that 768 million days of vacation time was left in corporate America. Can I tell y'all who didn't add to that? It was not me. Y'all left 700 and something million days of vacation time. On, in other words, that means some of you are working more than you should be working. That means there's vacation time that you have that you don't take, that they have incorporated with your salary packages, but you won't take it. And you're trying to figure out why am I so frustrated because you haven't taken no time to detach yourself from that job. You haven't taken no time to detach yourself from that career. And we left almost $65 billion in corporate America simply because we don't know how to detach ourselves and keep ourselves from burning out. Out. But I have you to know, brothers and sisters, if I could come and interview some of those people, I guarantee you those are some of the same husbands that are frustrated with their wives simply because they won't take some time out. These are wives who don't have time for their husbands simply because they won't take no time out. These are church folk who don't do nothing in the ministry simply because they haven't taken, y'all won't get Excited with me this morning, but I'll preach you just how I feel because when you don't take time for yourself to keep yourself mentally sane, emotionally sane, yeah, yeah, yeah. and physically healthy, and mis mentally healthy, you'll find yourself in a very miserable place in life, and it leads to burnout. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you about this Palestinian brother by the name of Jesus. When we look at the text... Jesus, at the age of 29 and a half, when he was baptized in the Jordan River, Jesus was a young man. I like looking into the life of Jesus because 29 and a half years of age, here it is, Jesus goes and he's baptized. The Bible tells us, if you look in Mark, look back in Mark, when you get a chance to read, you'll find in Mark, the Bible tells us that when Jesus was baptized, that the Spirit sent him out in the wilderness. <laughs> I wish I had some Bible reads tonight. The Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. When did it send them, Baker? It sent them out soon as he had been baptized. It, can, I, can I talk to some of y'all? As soon as you were saved, God sent you somewhere. Soon as you were born again, here it is. Soon as Jesus, the Christ, Christo, here it is. As soon as he was baptized, his dad had sent him in the wilderness. Okay, y'all. Y'all looking a little too good tonight. Well, let me help you out because some of us have been questioning God. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Why am I being faced with all these challenges? Why do I have to go through so many ups and go through so many downs? It's because God has an assignment on all of our lives. And when you have an assignment on your life, God will send you out, watch this, sometimes to a wilderness. God doesn't always send you to wonderland. And sometimes you have to go to a wilderness. He doesn't always send you to Disneyland. Sometimes he got to send you to the east side of Decatur. He doesn't always send you to the upper echelon of Buckhead. Sometimes he got to send you to Bankhead. I wish I had five of y'all who would shout with me. When God placed some assignment on my life, sometimes I have to go places that are not comfortable. I have to do things that are not comfortable. I have to see things that are not comfortable. Even to folk that are okay, y'all won't stop right there. Nathaniel asked the question. Nathaniel said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? There'll be some happy folks to know today. Even if you felt like almost you was at burnout, felt like you almost wanted to give up, there was something good that came out of your life. There was something good that came out of your family. They still looking at you and want to know is there anything good coming out of you, Mary? Is there anything good? Coming out of the park today, and it's been good coming out of bank, but you ought to raise your hand today and say, no matter how heavy it's been, no matter how many headaches I had, something good is coming out. Jesus, 29, if your boy, he's baptized, sent into the wilderness, 
And he starts his ministry. Jesus goes out and starts ministry at a young age. I like this text. If I had a chance to preach this in the front of a lot of senior pastors, I would tell them, don't be so hard on the young preacher. Don't forget what age Jesus was. Ooh. That's another sermon. That's another sermon. Because here it is. Jesus was 29 and a half, and his daddy felt the need to put the whole world on his shoulder. Okay. Don't y'all miss that. Quit thinking that young folk can't get nothing accomplished. Jesus, 29 and a half, has a daunting task on his life. His dad sends him and tells him, it's time for you to go and do the works. You remember, Jesus said, it's time for me to go about my father's business. He only knew it was time to go about his father's business because he had a relationship with his father. Sometimes we're so lost in this world because we, we're so used to church, but we're not used to a relationship with our father. Yeah. And so sometimes we can't hear. We got lost in the pandemic because we were not in the sanctuary. We got lost during the pandemic because we weren't pulling up on the parking lot. We got lost during the pandemic because we weren't here at the pews. We got lost during the pandemic because we couldn't hear the musicians. We got lost because we didn't see the preacher preaching. But when you have a relationship, with the father I wish I had some real saints you can be in your kitchen and you can hear from your daddy you, you can be driving and feel the very presence of your father and so it is Jesus is out ministering and as he's out ministry when you, when you see it in the text when you get a chance I want you to look through Mark all the way amen beginning at the first amen verse of this chapter we find Jesus doing ministry and Jesus as he's doing ministry he continues to do the work even if he felt like he was tired you know what it bothers me sometimes, some of us? Hey, man, we could do half of something and we don't want to work for the rest of the week. All right. Here it is, Jesus, at a young age, was out doing the will of his father. And in the midst of doing the will of his father, Jesus starts working. He starts ministering. He started driving out unclean spirits. And I like when Jesus started to, to drive out unclean spirits because him being able to drive out unclean spirits mean that Jesus had some power. Can I talk to you in the midst of almost being burnt out, in the midst of being out there working, in the midst of ministry, Jesus still had power to fight devils. Can I talk to some of y'all today? Oh man, I wish I had a place to shout with y'all because no matter what your day is like, you still got to have enough faith in God that you have enough power for the devils that's still coming your way. I, I know you feel like like this was a great day, amen, but there's still a devil that's going to try to interrupt your Tuesday. I know that you're probably thinking this is going to be a great Sunday, but there's a devil that's going to try to post something before Sunday's over. There's a devil that's going to try to send something through the family chat box. There's a devil that's going to try to get you tomorrow morning at work. There's a devil, I wish I had some people that understand, but Jesus watched this because he had relationship with his father. He was able to catch Cash devils out. But now here, why you get so happy, Baker? Because he didn't spend time trying to call the disciples. He didn't need to call nobody else. He, he cast the, the demons out himself. Can I talk to some people this morning that understand them? When you have a relationship with your father, you've got power to cast demons out your family. Demons out your finances. Demons. I wish I had some real people. Could it be that there's so much sin? Sickness in your family because there's not enough relationship with the father. Could it be that there's a lot of poverty in your family because there's not enough relationship with the father? Could it be that there's a lot of unemployment in your family because there's not enough relationship with the father? When there's enough relationship with the father, there's favor in the family. Woo. Oh, I wish I had somebody could say there's favor in my family. Or oh, you ought to shout that this morning and say there's favor in my family. Simply because I know the Father. Or oh, you ought to be happy right there. Your grandchildren are being blessed. Not because they know the Father, but because you know the Father. Somebody's spouse is being, I wish I had some real people. Say, my family has favor because I know who the Father is. Jesus. Driving out unclean spirits. And here it is. 29, 25th verse says, Jesus rebuked the spirit saying, be silent. 
I wonder what would happen in your life if you would understand how powerful you are that when the enemy comes up against your family, you can say, shut up and be silent. All right. <laughs> Do better, I'm just reading the text. The text says that Jesus said, be silent. I wish you understood how powerful you are with the enemy that's coming up against your marriage, coming up against your family, coming up against your finances, coming up against your health. You got to learn how to say, be silent. I wish there was some people here that say tonight, be silent, be silent. There, there are things that's been coming up against your family. You got to learn how to speak and say, be silent. You will not destroy my faith. You will not destroy my finances. You will not destroy. Be silent. Somebody ought to be saying, be silent right now. Talk, be silent for your children. They've been trying to destroy the youth in the community. Be silent, devil. You've been trying to destroy our families. Be silent, devil. There'll be some people in here that says, God has given me a power to speak to the devil and the enemy has to be silent. Oh, y'all don't know when to shout. I know you're feeling burned out, but sometimes you gotta say, devil, be silent. Tells him to be silent. Jesus is tired. He's going from place to place serving. He's going. He's tired. He's tired from serving. He's going. He's tired. He's tired from working. He's going. He's casting out demons. He's healing. He's tired. He's tired from working. Ain't it something that so many folk now are tired but ain't found working? All right. All right. Pre Preach, Baker. I, I, I'm trying to do the best I can. <laughs> So many people now, they, 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 they are so tired, but no work is being done. You know, you want to see when, when, when what you say lines up with what really what your fruit shows. If, 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 if your life doesn't show no fruit, then of, of, of you saying you're working so hard, or you're doing all this work, and there's no fruit of it, there's no evidence. Uh, 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 could, could it be that you're really not getting anything done? All right, yeah. Here's what I'm trying to say. You, you got to learn how to control your busy. Wow. Oh, yeah. Tie that down to the common field. Control my busy. Some of us say, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, but you ain't got nothing done. You, I'm, I'm busy, I'm busy. You call them, what you doing? I'm busy, let me call them back. I'm busy, what you doing? I'm a pastor, I would be there, but I'm busy. I'm busy, and then two years later, in the same place, but they've been busy for two years. You, you, you call them two years later, but what you, I'm a pastor, I, I, I've been busy, I've been busy, and three years later, Brendan, they're in the same spot. I'm trying to figure out why no fruit is with your busyness. For there is a difference between being busy and being productive. It, it, being busy doesn't just mean you're being productive. So Jesus understood that I can't just be busy. I have to be productive. A fruit of him being productive was the fact that people, lame people, were starting to walk. <laughs> the dawn was starting to It was fruit of his ministry. It was fruit of his work. Can I ask you, what is the fruit of you saying you burned out? Wow. What, what, what are you so tired for? What have you been doing? Because here it is, Jesus understands that there's some fruit that has to show in the midst, I want y'all to remember that he casts out a demon, tells the demon to be silent. He talks to an unclean spirit and tells him, ends up saying to be quiet. All right. Now here it is, in the midst of him talking to the spirit, do bear all of them are amazed around Jesus. You know what I come to discover when, when, when there, there will be some folks amazed around you because of what you're doing for God versus them not being surprised by your behavior. <laughs> right, Y'all miss that. See, see, some people, you ever call somebody and say, oh, you know Tim got locked up? They say, I ain't surprised. Yeah. I ain't shocked at all. But when you got that phone call, he said, you, you know Tim don't got enrolled in school, Tim don't change life, and they say, what? Right. Because they amazed. Amen. What life have you been living? <laughs> Are people amazed by your life? Or well, they ain't surprised at all. But y'all, y'all get quiet on my trip just help some people because you start saying you're burnt out. What is actually burning you out? Because anything can burn you out, but is it productive? Are you, are you burned out because what you're doing is producing some fruit? Jesus speaks to an unclean spirit. Now he he talks, tells the spirit to watch as he says, be silent. Jesus, I like Jesus because Jesus continued to work. The Bible tells us that if he rebukes the, 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 the devil, he, the demon, he comes. And then Jesus finds himself at a synagogue again. And when he left the synagogue, he went to Simon and Andrew's house with James and John. 
Simon's mother-in-law was laying in the bed with a fever and they told him about her. Here it is. Jesus thought that his day was over and they gave him some more work. What, what do you do when everybody keeps piling everything on you? What, what do you do when, when you're the go-to person in your family and everybody keeps piling everything on you? What, what do you do when everybody forget that there's other folk in the family they keep wanting you to pick up everything. Huh? What, 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 what happens when, when there are they a church full of folk, but there are only three people that keep doing the work? Y'all won't say amen to it. What, 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 what happens when, when everybody professes and confesses that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, but it's only really five people that are showing fruit of some kingdom living? I wish y'all would be real with me this morning because it is Jesus could have. He was full God and he was full man. And so Jesus got tired just like us. He cried just like us. He felt pain just like us. And in the middle of the day, thinking his day was over, they gave Jesus some more work. The Bible tells us that even though they gave him some work, Jesus watched this do, Barry. He still did what God had called him to do. Can you still work when you don't want to do it? I've said so many occasions. I've said so much. Hey Amen. You got to feel like it even when you don't feel like it. I know y'all been trying to find that in the text. Y'all know what I'm saying. Pastor's been saying that for five years. We can just find it in the Word of God. You got to feel like it. Even Jesus didn't feel like it, but he had to do what God had called him to do. Why are you telling us, Pastor? Sometimes uh, as preachers, you have to do what God calls you to do, even when you don't feel like it. Sometimes as deacons, uh, you got to do what you have to do, even sometimes as members, you got to do what God has called, even when you don't feel like it. Sometimes as mothers, sometimes uh, as fathers, sometimes you have to do what you have to do, even when you Jesus, but he still had to do it. Here it is when he does it. Watch this. Because he pushed through, somebody's mother was healed. Because he looked beyond his physical, his tiredness, do bear somebody was healed. Who is it that's depending on you to push through what you're going through right now? Ooh, this is hurtful. This is tired because you're probably saying, Pastor, no, I'm, I'm tired. Of, but is it could it be that God has given you something heavy to carry because he wants to see how well you can carry heaviness before you can carry his happiness? Ooh. Pastor, you got to preach this thing I can feel because some of us want all of God's happiness, but we don't want any of his heaviness. We don't want to have to carry no cross. But the Bible tells us that pick up your cross and follow him daily, meaning that you're going to have to have some trials and have some tribulations. But, Pastor, what do you do when it starts to cause burnout? Eventually, after he's done everything this whole day, the Bible even tells us, brother, that after he heals the mother, more people are still coming because they want to be healed. Can I, can I tell you? Sometimes an indication that you're doing God's work is when folk automatically draw to you Woo. instead of running from you. You, you. you know, you got some people who are jealous. You know, I, I see people all the time jealous. I don't know why they like them so much. Maybe because there's something about them that draw folk to them versus drawing folk away from them. Y'all don't want to be happy with me tonight. Maybe, maybe your attitude is affecting your altitude. That's the reason why God is not taking you nowhere because uh, you are drawing people away from you versus drawing people closer to you. And when you draw people closer to you, if Jesus is on the inside of you, then you're not just drawing them to you, but you're drawing them to Christ. That's the whole point of this is discipleship. And so here it is. Jesus understood that, listen, they're bringing more. More people are coming. Jesus in the house, they knocking on the door. Hey, where that healer at, man? Where, where, where that dude at that's, that's healing for? Man, y'all let him come out here. I'm sick. I'm blind, too. Can't y'all see him out there? They all got their hand raised. Man, get out of the way, John. Shoot, my leg been hurt for 12 years. Move out of the way, TJ. Man, I got a big toe that's been hurt. Everybody's out there got something they need, and Jesus 
he's on the inside and he's tired. And eventually Jesus says, Mommy, let me go out there and see how many folks I can heal. Because she said, it's not about me. He said, it's about the works of my father. And sometimes you got to push through stuff even when you don't feel like it. But the text tells us in the 35th verse, and I'm almost done, watch this, that Jesus finally goes to sleep. Look at this whole day, and he finally gets some chance to rest. When he gets some rest, most of us, when we go to sleep, we go to sleep. But Jesus went to sleep with some different intentions because the Bible tells us that he woke up very early in the morning. Some of us woke up early in the morning, you'd be ready to shoot somebody. Man, you swing your arm, putting your nose out, doing your lips, and all that stuff. Jesus woke up very, he was intentional about getting up. He, he started his day with intent. He was very intentional. He said, I, when I go to sleep, I want to make sure I get up in the morning before everybody. The, the way he handled the burnout was, number one, it was his relationship. Mm. Number one, the way Jesus handled burnout, overcome burnout, he said, I must keep a relationship with my father. Could it be some of y'all are, uh, are burning out because... You're not understanding the real relationship you have with your father. Look at what you're saying, Pastor. Look at, look at what Jesus does in the text. He goes to sleep. He gets some rest. Number one, he gets some rest. Then he recognizes his relationship with his father. He says, when I get some rest, though, I'm going to get up early in the morning. Some of us got our alarm clock set 12 times to get up on time. And then the first thing you do when you get up after the time, you get on social media time. I can't get no help this morning. So. But Jesus didn't think about folk and what was going on in the world. He thought about if I get my rest, I gotta go spend some time with the one I have a relationship with. Could it be that a lot of your days are starting out the way it started off because you ain't in a prayer mode? He got up early in the morning, and the text tells us that while it was still dark, yeah, yeah some of y'all got up in the morning and said, Oh, it's still dark. I got more time to sleep. No, no. Get up. He said, watch this in the text. It says, he went where? Out. Sometimes, in order for you to avoid burnout, you got to go out. Okay. Some, some of you want to stay so close to friends and family. Sometimes you got to learn to go out, go away. Jesus went away. I, I, I was so happy about two or three weeks ago when we went to Puerto Rico. When I tell y'all, it was the most refreshing thing in the world. My vacation didn't start when we got to Puerto Rico. Quinn Baker vacation started at 6 o'clock p.m. when I logged out of 4 o'clock. As soon as I hit enter, bam, I said, hey, hey. My mind had changed. You can't tell me how I was already vacation. I was, in, I was already in Puerto Rico. I, I hadn't even got on the plane yet. But in my mind, I was already in Puerto Rico because the party had already started. I, I had already put myself in vacation mode. But what are you saying, Pastor? You see, rest starts right here. And sometimes the reason why we're feeling burnt out because there's something that you're not doing mentally to get yourself in place. Jesus was mentally in the place so when he got up in the morning, he was able to go out before everybody. He goes out and talks to his father. And watch this. Not only does he get rest, not only does he see his relationship with his father, but he responds well to everything that's going on. How are you responding to the issues of your life? Wow. Okay. We got family members, we got people, we got some of us that have responded by alcohol, responded by drugs, responded by sex, we're responding in so many different ways. But Jesus says, the way I'm going to respond, I'm going to get up early in the morning and I'm going to talk to my dad. Right. Text tells us, watch this, he goes to this deserted place. He goes outside of Atlanta. He goes outside of Concord. He goes outside of McDonald's. Sometimes in order to get what you need, you got to go outside of what you're so used to. Oh, man, I, I wish I had two more hours to really teach this. Because some of us will burn out because of the people you so surrounded by. Okay, don't, don't miss that. Hey, Amen. You, you burnt out by folk you're around every day. So sometimes you got to get away from the folk you're around all the time so you can have a peace of mind. Here it is. Jesus got away. From his usual folk. 
He got up early in the morning. He goes out here. He's praying in a desolate place. And as he's praying, watch this. As he's praying, here come the fellows. The Bible tells us that Simon and the companions searched for him. Right. You know what happens? There's some people in your family that's in so much need of you that they don't ever reach out to see what you need of them. Ah. Ain't it something when you're feeling burnt out, when you've been working so hard, there's not enough people in your, your, your circle that checks on you. Instead of them going to the desolate place, checking on Jesus, they go checking Jesus. Okay, don't miss that. I said instead of them going to check on Jesus, they go checking Jesus. Uh, all right, that may be out of your house, but um, let, me, let me bring it back to the pastor. That has me and folk that don't call and check on pastor, but they ain't got no problem calling and trying to check pastor. Now, I've had people that don't even check on me, but they got always trying to check what I do at New Mount Carey. They don't check on my family, but always trying to check what I do with my family. They don't check on my money, but always trying to check what I do. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. They go out there to check Jesus versus to check on Jesus. Sometimes you're first in burnout because the people who say they love you the most are too busy checking you versus checking on you. Okay, let me get that. Okay, all right. I'm almost done. See, there's too many people that are surrounding you that, that should be concerned about your health. Should be concerned about your walk. So they go out there and watch this. Jesus is talking to his father. Do where they go out there and say, man, what you doing out here? They go out back there and say, do where, what you doing preaching still? Baker, why are you still praying? Deke, why are you still going down to that church? Mama Pops, why are you always, they want to keep asking you that, but they never say, what can I do to help you? <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, let me move forward. Let me all right, y'all with me? Y'all at home, y'all with me? Okay, thank you, thank you, because uh, when, when, when you're facing burnout, sometimes people just need to stop and check on you. But the only way they can know that is people who are close to you got to have uh, a desire to want to know that you're okay. Here it is, I'm, I'm done. Jesus turns and says, Let's go to the neighboring. They come checking on him. And what he tells them is, let's go. He says, let's go. He says, because I got to go to the neighboring village so that I may preach there too. So this is why I come. In other words, he avoided burnout by getting some rest, understanding his relationship with his father. The way he responded was by what? Prayer. Then his results were he was energized. How do you know this, baby? Because when he came and got him, he said, let's go. I'm ready. It's early in the morning. And his joke said, let's go, I'm ready. Uh -huh. so the his father got him what he needed to be. He says, I'm ready. Now watch this. Before he got rest, he healed the mother. He was healing those who were sick. He cast out demons. Now, watch this. This is what I like about the text. After he had rested, after he had talked to the one he had a relationship with, after he had responded with prayer, we've seen the results of his energy. We talked about this a couple of months ago, discovering your rhythm. Jesus was able to get back into his rhythm. Uh -oh. Some of us are rhythm. Let me show you how Jesus gets back into his rhythm. If he had not rested, he had not taken some time to himself. He would have not been able to do what he did in verse 39. All right. ah. If he had not done verses 35 through 38, Jesus would have not been able to fulfill 39. All right. Okay, you probably saying, well, what's so good about 39? Pastor, let me tell you, because I know many of y'all have already turned your Bibles. Y'all probably looking at some old videos. And okay, let me tell you. Verse 39 says, he went into all of Galilee preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Okay, don't miss this. He was driving out demons, preaching, and healing the sick. He felt himself almost burnt out, so he went home and got rest. 
in order for him to continue what he was doing and do it effectively, he had to rest, he had to talk to the one he had a relationship with, he had to get some results, he had to get back into his rhythm, and the Bible says after he did that, Dewberry in the 39th verse, he was able to preach again and able to cast out demons again. Could it be that you're falling in your ministry, falling in your work, not casting out demons in your family because you're too burnt out? Goodbye. Y'all have a good one. In order to avoid burnout, we got to do exactly what Jesus did. Y'all get some rest. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Not getting the rest I need to get. But, but, but Jesus just preached to me in this text. He got his rest. He didn't care. After he had done enough, Jesus got his rest. Can I just talk to some people about way of my life? Play something soft for y'all. And everybody say in the church, they say, play something soft for musicians. <laughs> get your rest. Do you know 13 out of every 100,000 people commit suicide? Did you know that the suicide rate of pastors had went up during the pandemic and suicide period has went up? Burnout. 1,700 pastors, they say, leave the ministry every week. Burnout. The divorce rate has went up. Burnout. Folks just walking around here. This is the first time I've seen in America where you can go anywhere and everywhere and just about smell somebody smell like marijuana. All right, folks, just getting high. I still believe that there is a Savior who is able to keep us. Oh, sometimes do very is hard on this journey. Before you burn out, you have to do like Jesus. You gotta get your rest. Because Jesus understood, I'm not any good for them if I don't take care of myself. So I can't do the work of the ministry if I don't take care of myself. Sometimes my part, I find myself up all night long, long worrying about church grows and Negroes. Just to wake up the next morning tired and church girls and Negroes going about their business. But can I bring it to your house? Sometimes you worry about stuff that ain't even worried about you. You worry about people that ain't worried about you. Jesus says, first we find, he says, cast your cares, cast them upon me. And then I, I have the ability to carry it. You can't carry it. Well, y'all stand to your feet. I'm done, but. Burnout is real. Burnout is real. You gotta get your rest. Know what your relationship is. Be careful how you respond to being tired. I've had to apologize more than a little bit for saying stuff I shouldn't have said because I was tired and frustrated. The results you want. Get back into your rhythm. God bless you. God bless you wherever you are. Those who are at home, those who are here, listen. I know sometimes we say we want to offer Christ to you, but he ain't ours to offer. We do want to extend an opportunity. An opportunity for you to be able to know who this Savior is. But that 39th verse is, after he got his rest, after he talked to his father, after he was energized, he wasn't burnt out, he was able to go do more work. How many of you this morning want to do more for your family? Do more for yourself. Do more for your church. Do more for your community. What you can't do more into God for. I'm going to take you back there just in case some of you missed what he read. But since he's one of those ministers, get Romans 10. Come back up here, Dewberry. Read it to him. Let him, let him know what he's talking about. 
gotta know when. Because there's somebody at home that's saying, how do I get to know this Savior? How is it that I get to be saved? desire and my supplication to God is for them that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. Verse 4, For Christ is in the end of law and to righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses is writing that the man that does the righteousness which is of the law shall live thereby. But the righteousness which of faith says God, say not in their heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who shall descend into Abbas, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what saith it? The word is not thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Because if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus as Lord, and shalt believe it in thy heart that God raises him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen, amen. All you have to do is confess. All you have to confess. Today, listen, I hope that God has blessed you through the word of God today. I want to leave you with something because I believe if anything's going to bless you, it's going to be Genesis 2.17. Genesis 2.17. Genesis 2.17. Real, real quick, this is going to bless you because if there's one thing that's going to help you to avoid burnout, somebody say set some boundaries. God set boundaries in your life. God set boundaries for Adam and Eve and said, do not eat of the tree of knowledge and evil. He set boundaries for them because he understood, now if you break these boundaries, what's going to happen is on you, but I'm setting boundaries. What boundaries have you set in your life that's going to keep you from being burned out? I just share with you, it's time for you to set boundaries. Yeah. One of the biggest boundaries we can set is saying no. Because you can't do everything. You can't do everything. Listen, God bless you. We love you. Wherever you are, I want you to lift your hands right where you are. And say, God, I love you. I will get rest. I will be in relationship with the Father. I'll be in relationship with the Father, but I'll respond by praying. Not only would I respond with prayer, but I'll be sure to get good results. After I get good results, I pray that I'm back in rhythm. God, I thank you. Give me all the honor. All of the glory. It's in Christ Jesus' name we do pray.
on, put your hands together as we get ready to leave today. I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope God blessed you. I want you to put your hands together and dance a little bit with me. Come on, to the left, to the right. Come on, hey, to the left, to the right. Come on, take it back. To the, uh, come on, take it back. Come on, to the left. <laughs> Listen, if it had, had not been for the Lord on my side, tell 